Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much also for the invitation. Um, as it was said, I'm sorry I did not hear your question correctly, but DG Agriculture is here, which is quite um, something because actually this is not our core competence, of course. This is more a case for our colleagues from DG Research here, probably from DG Sanko. But um, when I look in the audience and I see that uh, from producers to trade to um, both the processing industry for juice as well as for uh, fruit and vegetables, the whole um, wide world of agriculture is here, then I think um, I'm probably not so, so wrong in the place. And also, of course, um, DG Agriculture, after all, has a very strong tool, a powerful tool in its hands, which is the Common Agricultural Policy which um, can and should be obviously used also to achieve health goals in the future. Um, just to introduce myself, um, I work for the um, Indigi Agriculture for a Market Unit. That means my task is to analyze markets, fruit and vegetables markets specifically, and to provide input for the policy design process. And this is actually what my uh, presentation today is about. So this is not anything more about data, about um, testing, or about any scientific evidence. This uh, presentation aims to explain you um, a policy process that is currently ongoing. So this is a work in progress I'm talking about. I will try to um, explain to you why the European Commission, and specifically DG Agriculture, is looking into establishing a school fruit scheme. Um, how we um, try to achieve this, and who are the players in this game. And um, this third issue directly refers to all of you, because obviously, um, as I mentioned, the sector, of course, itself, but also the representatives here of uh, public health NGOs and of the scientific community have, um, have been and will hopefully be in the future um, essential to the success of this project. Um, a small remark as a commission um, staff member. Of course, this um, presentation is my opinion, my opinion alone. So the official opinion, the official position of the European Commission can be found on the relevant um, official documents. I will refer to the web page at the end of this presentation. The presentation, just the final word, is quite long. I will cut it. I will be rather faster. But it will be made available to you if you so wish. So off we go. Um, I will start briefly with um, the policy environment where DG Agriculture comes from. This is um, concerning public health, not a spotless um, record. Then uh, why, we, um, went, uh, why we started our activities. And then, as I said, um, who, is the, who are the players and, and how we are going to act. Very briefly about the background. Um, as you probably know, there's the school milk scheme, very well established scheme in several member states, um, but with a certain limited appeal due to administrative and other restrictions. Then we have the um, deprived person scheme. That was a scheme that was initially um, uh, using surplus intervention stocks to be distributed for free to the most needy in the European Union. It is currently being extended. And the third one is, um, was a, is a scheme to um, withdraw fruit and vegetables from the market, also an overproduction program, um, and is also currently still existing but being changed. What is the, I skip immediately to the lessons drawn. In all three of these instruments, what can we observe? We can observe um, that these programs are, are supply driven, that means School milk, deprived persons, as well as market withdrawals are based on the fact that um, production is put on the market under preferential conditions to the citizen. The citizen has no choice which products he wants and, and, and under which conditions. He is being given a, an offer. He can take it or leave it. The second thing is that public health <coughs> is not an objective of these measures. These measures, all three of them, have been and still are mainly market measures. To stabilize the market, um, that is their main goal. Um, we, um, in these agri-measures, we did not um, have any, any, any public health goal. Um, thirdly, uh, the interested public and the sector um, were 
not really involved in the, in the implementation and in design of these policies. The sector, the agricultural sector, yes, as it was a market measure, but further than this, we did not venture, so to speak. And thirdly, um, all three of these schemes have been plagued um, by uh, complaints from member states that they are uh, too complex in the administration, control obligations are too difficult, and um, uh, the, the, the rules are simply too complex to implement this in an effective way. This is our starting point. This is where DG Agriculture was um, at in 2006-2007, uh, when we were looking at the reform of the um, market organization for fruit and vegetables. Another issue that came up at this time was the stagnating consumption. What you can see here is a graph that is um, not only raises the issue of stagnating consumption, which has been addressed here, I think, um, in, in enough detail. This graph more or less um, tries, I presented to you to show you um, what is our task also. DG Agriculture's task is also, as, as, as in the policy process, to, to make a point. This graph can be described as rather, um, well, I would not use manipulative, but it's, it's um, highly pointing out a very, very um, tiny reaction, I would say. The stagnation, it's a stagnating consumption. This graph could give the impression that um, consumption is declining rather rapidly. Um, what we tried, this, we did not use this in, in the official documents, of course. This is just um, for explanatory purposes. But um, it was clear for us that, that we have to communicate, that we have to, that, that we have to um, um, communicate the trend also, that we have to look a bit further and not just at the situation that is. The second issue at stake, of course, obviously is the, um, the non-fulfillment of this um, minimum recommended intake of the 400 grams. I don't want to join again, as I said, the discussion about data. We started with DAFNE data, we found it insufficient. We moved on to Eurostat data, we found it also not very um, well developed. And um, this is a graph uh, developed on a mixture of FAO, Eurostat and also Freshfield data. Um, we would be happy if there would be a single source, reliable, up to date. Uh, at this state in time, this, was, this, this graph was established basically nearly almost a year ago now, this was the best we could get for all the member states, which is of course essential for us. So describing the issues at stake, describing where we came from, what um, did um, DG Agriculture define at its, at its reason to act, at its objective to act? On one inside, um, the legal base for us, of course, are the objectives of the common agricultural policy and as such, stabilizing markets. But stabilizing markets is a very non-dynamic term. It's more or less interpreted or it's more or less better described if you look at it, that it is to create a stable demand. That means also to look forward. Where is the trend going? What can we do to, 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 to turn the trend or to, 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 to increase the trend or to stop a certain trend? How can we also use these measures to create uh, an incentive for innovations, product innovations, creating products for the consumer of tomorrow? And also, of course, um, um, creating future consumption as such. And secondly, there is a certain legal base for, for um, agriculture to become active in this area because uh, in, the, in the Treaty of Amsterdam there is an article which um, uh, spells out that public health should be taken into consideration in all measures of European policy. It is a very broad approach but, um, and it does not give us enough legal base, of course, DG Agriculture to start a school fruit scheme, but it is an additional um, um, objective, so to speak, we are taking into account. 